Before a valve uh, face can be ground, the tip of the valve has to be ground because when the valve goes into the valve grinding machine, it goes into a nice true grind. So we have to grind the tip because oftentimes they're worn from the rocker arm actuating that valve many, many millions of times. So before we can grind that, we need to again dress our stone. And we have a stone dressing tool that's part of the machine here. It has a diamond tip in the end and we'll bring that up till it contacts. We do, don't want to take any more off the stone than we have to. So there we, now that stone is true and clean with a good clean surface which will grind nicer on the valve. I'm going to set up my valve for grinding the tip. I'm going to back off my adjustment here to start with and insert my valve in this holder device. I'm going to bring it close to the stone so that I don't have a whole lot of anxious anticipation as I approach the stone and snug it in. The V that the valve stem is clamped in keeps it square to the stone. And once again, I'll turn on my grinder and I will turn on my coolant flow and, and we bring it up till we make contact. Audibly you can hear it, uh, there isn't much to be seen, but you'll hear it contact the stone. I'm keeping it moving so that I don't gouge the stone when I make contact. You don't want to pull towards you or push away from you with this because it does have some gifts. You want to gently move it across the stone with very little end thrust. All right, I'm going to back that off now and we'll check our grind. All right, you can see the end of that valve is beautiful uh, with oil coolant and a nice clean fine grit stone. It gives you a mirror finish on the end of that valve tip. Now if I had to grind off a fair bit because this valve was mushroomed over, I would lose the chamfer that's on the end of this guide. So I would have to put the chamfer back on. We're going to demonstrate that now. To do that, we're going to use another special tool that comes with the machine and it is a, a V-block that you put the valve in. It comes up against the stop. And we set it up there and we just rotate it by hand as we contact the stone. So I'll set that up in here right now. And again, I'm going to set it fairly close to the stone now. All right, so again, I'm going to bring that up very close to the stone. For how small a grind this is, you know what? Coolant isn't all that necessary. This is going to be a very quick chamfer on here. And again, I will bring that up till it contacts the stone. And I hear it. Now I rotate the valve and I put a chamfer on that. And again, you can see that makes a very nice chamfer on the end. We don't want a sharp edge. We never want sharp edges on metals that are stressed because it is a break point for that metal. All right, before we can grind our valves, we've already placed our uh, valve guides on our valve seats. Now we can grind our valves. And to do that, one of the things we need to do first of all is make sure that they are straight. So if I put this valve in the chuck of this grinder, then at the back of the machine, I have to set up this guide mandrel. And it has a tapered cone hole, which the end of the valve is going to center in so that the valve end doesn't wobble around. So that has to be centered in there. And I'm just going to roughly set it for now because I'm just checking the valve for run out or to see if it's bent. Snug that. Now I would pull the release lever on this chuck and tighten a little bit more than I did when I put the valve in there. Now when I pull the handle I can release it, put it back in and let it tighten up and it goes to the same position and tightness every time. Now to check it for run out I would take a dial indicator. So we want to be perpendicular to the surface that we're checking. So we want to get it onto that valve face and there we have it somewhat perpendicular to the face. Now we'd rotate that by hand and see how much run out we have. All right, as we rotate the valve, we can see the dial indicator is not moving. This valve has been previously ground, unfortunately, but it shows no run out at all. Normally you would have around three to four run out, three to four thousandths of an inch run out on that valve. And you will correct that by grinding the face and bringing it back to perfect. So here's, here's the there's 45 30. and 46, so we would turn that for a exhaust valve at 45 degrees, we'd turn right to there. And if a lot of the intake valves are only 30, so here is our 29 and 30 degrees, so we can do an asynchronous grind or an interference grind, and there we'd set that to 30 degrees. So the table is movable for the different valve face angles, and then you can lock it down and grind at that angle.
valve face now and we put a little rubber protector on here that goes up against the chuck to keep grit from getting in our chuck. This is a precision tool and the grit is very harmful to everything so we try to keep it as uh, out of harm's way as possible. Now when I turn on the machine and I move the lever to bring the valve across uh, the valve will start to rotate and I can adjust the speed of that rotation but first I want to make sure that I'm not going to hit anything that I don't want to hit. So down here on our left of the machine there is an adjusting screw and it adjusts how far the table will move. So I would like to use the full width of the stone that makes so for less dressing of the stone. So if I bring it up close and I can see that I'm only about half width so I'm going to adjust that so it goes a little further until I can get the whole width of the stone. It's not always possible to get the full width of the stone. On smaller valves you can't do it. Now it's extremely important that this edge of the stone does not contact the stem. If that edge puts a notch in that valve head, that valve will fail in service and cause catastrophic engine failure. So if that happens, that valve is only good for a tent peg and nothing else. So now we're safe, we can't hit it, we're good to go. I'm going to turn on the machine and get my coolant flowing. All right, I have oil coolant flow that cools the valve, washes away the grindings, and gives me a very nice finish. Now I'll turn on the grinder or the valve rotator head. It's not turning yet, but as I move it across the stone, it'll start to turn. Now I'll bring the grinder closer to the valve face until I hear contact. It's an anxious moment as you're feeding up to the stone, but you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to hit the stone hard. We want a light pressure. You shouldn't be able to hear a lot of noise from the grinder. If you are, you're grinding too heavily. So you keep the stone moving so that you wear the surface of the stone completely across its surface. The idea here is to take away as little material as possible because uh, the more material you remove off the valve, the further valve is going to recess into the head, thereby lowering the compression of the engine. So I can take my valve out now and I can look at it and see if I have a good grind. Wipe some oil off here. Now before we put that valve in, I blackened the whole face with a black felt pen. And it, as you can see, it cleaned up completely all the way around. Normally valves that have a lot of hours on them will grind a little on one side before they grind on the other side and it makes kind of a, a funky noise that you can tell. It's not perfectly straight, but if it's close enough that you can grind it straight, the valve would be reusable. Again, as long as you don't have to take off too much. Now if you look at the edge of the valve, this is called the valve margin. The valve margin must never go below half the thickness of a new valve. So you can check the valve margin thickness on a valve before you grind it. And after you grind, if it's more than half that thickness still, that valve is usable. Again, it's important that we didn't touch the uh, filleted area of the valve because that would make a break point and that valve would fail in service, especially if it's an exhaust valve. Exhaust valves uh, are under a lot of strain and stress and can fail much easier than intake. All right, that valve's ready to go. That didn't take much. This valve is in good shape. A lot of times it will grind on the outside of the face, the inside of the face, but not in the middle where the seat was contacting. And you have to take the material down enough till it contacts across the entire face. But you can see how beautiful that grind is with the oil coolant and a fine stone that's well-dressed. It does a very, very nice job.